Hello and welcome to the bare metal programming series where we're building firmware for a Cortex M4 STM32 microcontroller. Now this is episode 7.2 uh, in which we are going to build our packet implementation, our kind of packet uh, format and our state machine. We're going to build all of that out today. Um, if that is kind of new to you, well, in episode 7.1, we actually explored the details of how it works, all of the design, uh, the state machine, and kind of how it fits into the bigger picture of the bootloader. So if, if you want to take a look and have a better understanding of what it is that we're actually going to code today, then I recommend taking a look at that. It's probably a good idea. All right, but uh, I really don't want to waste any time today. I just want to jump straight into it and get started with the implementation. So. The first thing we're going to do, I think, is to, um, hmm, where are we going to put this? I guess we're going to put this in the bootloader. So let's put, uh, I'm going to make a header file and I'm going to call it comms.h. And comms is short for communication in this sense. So it's the communication, the packet scheme. And that's kind of the, the namespace I'm, I'm going for here, the communications uh, part. Okay, so the first thing we need is to recreate our um, our packet format in a data structure. So this was our packet format. It's an 18 byte data structure. Um, this is what we want to replicate as, as, a, as a structure. So let's make a type def struct uh, comms packet t. So that's the name of this uh, data structure. We're gonna have a unit at uh, which is the length and un8 is not a known type yet so we need to include our common defines then we're going to have another un8 t uh, data this is just the data and the data is actually 16 bytes so it's an array of 16 bytes all in line right so this is just one byte then 16 bytes in a row and then finally, another byte, which is the CRC. Now, I think it makes sense to not put a explicit constant here, but rather we can break it out to a define. Define, and this is going to be the uh, packet data length. 16. Okay. So that's our data structure for a packet. Um, we're going to build these packets up and we're going to send them out. And when we receive packets, we're going to take those bytes and stuff it into this kind of structure. Okay, so what kind of functions are we going to need here? We're going to need a couple of functions. First of all, I think we'll have a, a setup function. So that's just going to be where we kind of do any setup stuff we need to for the whole packet state machine. Next, I think we're going to have a, I guess we're going to have a function for sending a packet. So um, I'm going to use write and read just like we did in the, in the, in the UART uh, protocol. Uh, that's, that's a matter of taste. You could choose to write that in something else uh, with a different name. And when we write, we just need to take um, a pointer to an existing packet. And that's all we need for that, I think. That will be enough for that. Um, of course, we're going to have a read. So when we do a read, um, void comms read. In that case, we're also going to want to have a pointer to a packet. And in order to do a read, uh, we're going to have to see if there's any packets available to us. Um, so in that sense, I think we're going to have a function up here, which will be a Boolean function, and we'll, we'll call it packets available. That will just tell us if there are any packets available. And then when we do a read, the assumption is that we've checked if there are packets available first. So that's how that's going to work. Now, what we're going to need kind of in addition to our setup function is an update function. 
And the reason that we're going to need an update function is that, well, the way that firmware is implemented in, in bare metal, um, and we see this really by, by looking at the firmware.c file, the way that firmware is, is written is with a, a big, never-ending infinite loop. And so what we do at each iteration of this loop is we just try to do some different bits of work. So here we're doing a bit of work that's related to blinking an LED uh, with, a, with a different brightness. Here we got a bit of work that's to do with like getting bytes out of the UART. And we might have all different kinds of other useful units of work that we do. But we do them in a little segment. So we just do a little bit of work here and then a little bit of work here. And then eventually we come back around and, you know, some more time has passed. Maybe we've received some other interrupts. We've gotten more ticks, more UART data has come in. But in all of these cases, like sometimes we'll come into these sections and sometimes we'll skip them. And we just keep looping around until, you know, kind of uh, those sections activate. Actually, we keep looping forever. So this process should just keep ticking along. And what we're going to have is something that's just another one of these processes that actually handles the communications. And for that, we'll wrap them all up into this function called comms update. So it's going to be just like this. But if you imagine that these, we called this, fun we put this into a function and we called it PWM update. And we put this into a function and we called it UR update. Like this is kind of how this would work. And this is what our comms API will do. Um, okay, so we've got uh, setup, update, packets available. We've got write and we've got read. And now I think we can have a couple of other uh, functions. We may need some other functions. But for now, maybe this is enough to get started. So let's actually already create uh, comms.c. And in here, we can immediately include our comms. Uh, comms.h file and it should find that it does and let's just paste in our interface here all right so comms setup well we can see what we need to put in here shortly comms update this is going to be where we actually implement our state machine. And so you'll remember from the previous episode that this is the state machine we're going to be implementing. So we're going to want to have a few things related to this, right? This is going to like, in all cases, we're going to need to be looking at our UI, UART bytes coming in. So let's, um, let's also include core slash UART. And at any given moment during this update, we're going to be dealing with like, hey, do we have some bytes? Like, so we'll do while you uh, are data available, and then we'll run the state machine. And any moment that we run out of bytes, like we can't do anything further, so we'll, we'll kind of quit there. All right, so um, according to this drawing, um, what states can we be in? Kind of, we've got uh, like how many bubbles here? We've got seven bubbles here, but actually we only really need to have these three. Um, because the other ones kind of represent just actions that we'll take. They're not real states. You could model them as states, but I'm just going to model these three uh, items here. So we're going to be in receiving the length, receiving the data, and receiving the CRC. So let's make a, a data structure here. So type def enum, and we'll call it comms, uh, comms state t. So this is just what state we're going to be in. And it's an enum. And so we're going to have comms state underscore um, length. We're going to be receiving the length. At some point, we're going to be receiving the data. And then finally, we're going to be receiving the CRC. That's it. That's kind of where we need to be. Um, so let's make a variable from this static com state t i'm just going to call it state and we will begin in the length state that's the first state that we start in and we're also going to need uh, a counter i guess it doesn't need to be 32 we're going to have a counter for how many uh data bytes we've seen right because this is a single state but we need to 
collect up 16 data bytes. So we're just going to have a counter that tracks how many data bytes we've collected. So um, I guess we'll just call this uh, count data bytes. That's a bad name. State data bytes. This is a bad. Uh, I'm going to call it data byte count. <laughs> And that's, that will start at zero. Um, it might be good to actually put these two things into their a structure together um, because they kind of represent the entire state of uh, that state machine. So it might be good to just put them together, but for now I'm gonna leave them apart. So now we can actually like begin to structure this out with a switch. So we're just gonna be looking at the, the state at any given moment. And for each of these three cases, we're going to be creating uh, a block of a block of data. So case this. I like to structure my switch statements like this. So we have the case with a block of a uh, block statement and then a break on the end. So like whenever we're done with a case, we we immediately break and we can just treat this as a block of code as normal. In the default case, so if somehow this state value had something that wasn't one of these, well, in that case, we will just set state uh, to be the length state. This shouldn't happen, actually, but in the case that it did, this is what we'll do. Okay, so when we're trying to receive a length byte, so this is, this is the place we're here, <clears throat> and we just want to get this byte that's coming in. Well, this is as simple as literally reading from the UR, right? We know that we have some bytes available. So what we're gonna do is to say that, well, we actually we actually need something to build up our structure into. So let's create that as well. This is gonna be our static um, comms packet T temporary packet. And by default, let's just set that up with some, some default values, uh, data. We'll just zero the whole thing out. Um, we could also just leave it uninitialized and initialize it here, or just actually leave it uninitialized. But I think it's always kind of better to have an initial value, even if it's just zero. Um, okay, so the, the length here, uh, what we'll actually do is to say that our temporary packet dot length equals UR read byte. So that's it. And that In that case, we've just read the packet's length and we can move to the next state, which is the data state. So while we're in the data state, um, well, we're going to just be uh, filling up the data section of this packet. So it's gonna look pretty similar to this, except instead it will be data, and then this will be our data byte count. So this is gonna act as the index which we're writing in. So this will start at zero, so we'll write zero. Then we will increment the data byte count every time we push in a, uh, a byte. And then at any moment, if data byte count is greater than or equal to the uh, packet data length. At that time, we'll want to reset this to zero and we will move to the, the CRC state. So that's how that will work. Basically, uh, only when we've collected up 16 bytes will we move to the next state. Okay, so now uh, now we're here, we're trying to collect the CRC, and at that moment we actually have to do a bit more, right? We've got these kind of branching paths that we can deal with, so this is gonna be where most of the hard work is done. So in this case, uh, we are going to basically be doing the same thing again, but instead this is the CRC byte. So we read the CRC, but now the very first thing we need to do is to check if this, if this CRC uh, matches the rest of the packet. So if we create, calculate a CRC of these 
these uh, bytes, we need to check if it's equal. So how are we going to do that? Well, I've actually included already uh, a CRC implementation in the code. So this is a CRC8 calculation. So this is a simple function. It returns an integer. It takes in an, a, a pointer to some data and a length, which is how many bytes we have. We create a CRC variable, which is equal to zero in the beginning. And for every byte available to us, we, uh, we do this procedure. Uh, da, 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 da. And I see this is actually wrong. I copied this out of a, set this up out of a piece of code. And this is actually not correct what's, what we have here. So we're missing a line, which is, uh, but here we should be saying CRC XOR equal data at I. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is that for every uh, every byte that comes in, we we XOR with the CRC, uh, the data byte, and then we for every for every bit essentially, so for eight bits, we do this kind of set of operations and. Actually, you don't really need to know what's happening here. You can see we've got an XOR, we've got an AND operation, we've got some shifting and some more XORing and some more shifting. So basically, we're doing a whole bunch of bit manipulations here. And there is some rhyme and reason. This isn't just a random set of operations that are taking place here. Um, this, this really has a reason. And these aren't magic numbers really either. They really also have significance. Um, but for us, this is a machine. We put some data in and we get a CRC out. We don't need to know much more than that for now. So at this point, we can actually get the, the CRC value. So what we can say is if, let's bring in this header, uh, core CRC eight, I believe. Yeah. At this point, we can check, does the temporary packet or CRC, if it doesn't equal um, CRC eight, and now we need to somehow like calculate a CRC of this packet. Um, in fact, I'm going to break this out here. So let's put this up here. So this is the computed CRC. So how do we compute the CRC from this data structure? Well, if we take a look at this data structure, you can see that actually it's just a bunch of bytes in a row. So there's a byte here, there's a byte here, well, there's actually 16 bytes here, and then there's another byte. So there's just, this is literally just 18 bytes one after the other. So what we can do is we can say, hey, we've got a, um, we've got this temporary packet, and I can create a pointer to this temporary packet by, you know, just um, putting an ampersand out here. And this would give a pointer to this structure. But then we can just cast this structure to a uint at pointer. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, I know that this says it's a comms packet t. It's pointing at a comms packet t. But actually, just imagine that it's pointing at a, a byte. It's pointing at a series of bytes in memory. Um, so what we're doing there is just interpreting the packet as a series of bytes. Now, I did mention in the previous episode, you need to be a little bit careful with this because sometimes structures, especially, well, when they have uh, different like data types in them. So if it isn't just a bunch of UN eights, but it's a bunch of U, it's UN32 with a ball and then a UN32 again, and then a UN8 afterwards, you have to understand that the compiler by default will insert padding between different fields to make sure that everything actually lines up on a memory boundary the memory boundary of the largest member. Um, in this case, we don't need to worry about that because it's not going to add any padding here. This is just a series of bytes in a row. There are no different data types. And so there are no different, um, there are no padding. There's no padding to worry about. But do keep it in mind that you can't always do this. You need, like sometimes you might do this and it doesn't quite work the way you think it will. Okay, so what we can do here then is like we actually only want to do the first 17 bytes, right? We don't want to take in the, the CRC into account, but I don't want to put the number 17 in here. So let's actually say that a, um, uh, so this is going to be a packet like length bytes. 
and we've got one length byte, uh, packet CRC bytes, one byte, and then we can have a packet length. So a packet length is actually uh, the length plus the, the data length plus the CRC bytes. That's what a packet is. Let's line all of these up. Okay, so now we can just use this packet length instead. Minus one, right? Or minus packet CRC bytes. In this case, we know that it's uh, it's 17. Okay, so this uh, this now gives us a computed CRC, and if these two don't match, then we're going to request a retransmission, right? Uh, that's what we do in the state machine. If the bytes don't match, it's a bad CRC, we need to re we need to request a retransmit. So how do we request a retransmit? Well, we're going to send a packet. And uh, for that, we actually need to have this idea of a retransmit packet. So let's come up here and let's add another member up here, which is going to be a comms packet, uh, R-E-T-X, retransmit packet. And we'll also initialize it to zero. Um, and what we could do in the setup is actually create this packet, right? It's going to allow us to just create a uh, uh, this 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 packet easily. So the way that this will work is um, well, the simplest way to do it is to create some more constants in here. So this is going to be a comms packet, uh, a packet RATX data zero. So this is what's going to be in that zero field. And here you can see that our re-request transmit, request transmit is a hex 19. That's what I've decided it is arbitrarily. So let's put that in here, hex 19. And just while we're here, the acknowledge is hex 15. So in a packet ac data zero is hex 15. Okay, so when we are creating this retx packet, the length is just one, and the data zero is just a packet retx data zero and all of the other bytes of this packet are ff so we can do for unat i equals zero i is less than uh, i is less than packet data length and we have to set this to one i plus plus uh, in that case we're just going to set all of these bytes to FF. And then to compute the CRC, yeah, that's probably quite a useful function to add here because also the the user, this is going to be a relatively low level API and we can always add a higher level API on top of this or build further functions that make it a higher level API. But one thing we might want to do is to, um, uh, to compute a CRC for a packet. So let's just have it return a UNAT. We'll pass in a packet that has uh, its length and its data set up and it will compute a CRC. So let's add that function down here. And that function, we've already written it actually, it's, it's this, it's, it's literally just this function call. So we can already, um, return this the packet is the packet and then instead let's use this function uh, here instead so now we can maybe uh, just call our own internal function and we'll pass a reference to the temporary packet okay so this is this is good um, so yeah now we need to actually compute the CRC for the RETX packet CRC equals 
uh, comms compute CRC, and we will pass a reference to this packet. And while we're here, we might as well do the ACK packet as well. So we're just going to set up exactly the same thing here for the ACK packet. But only this part should be different. OK, so now at this point, all we need to do is to say comms write, and we'll pass a reference to the RATX packet. And as soon as we've done this, according to our state machine, we should then transition to the receive byte uh, state, uh, the receive byte state. So let's do that. Receive length state. All right. And at this point, um, we can also break so that if we continue the code at this point, we know that we had a valid CRC. Okay, so our next decision to make is like, hey, we got a valid CRC, but is it a retransmit packet? And if it's a retransmit packet, then we need to just retransmit the last packet that we had. So let's check that. Um, we can say if, well, let's actually add a function for this because, um, yeah, I think, let's just add a function for if it's a retransmit packet static bool comms is retx packet and we will just like these other functions we will take in a packet pointer in this case we can say it's const because we don't change the value at all um, and how do we tell if it's a RETX packet? Well, we're going to assume that it has a valid CRC. So the only thing we need to check is um, like, well, let's think about it like this. If um, if the packet dot data, well, if the length is not equal to one, um, then we can already we can already say, well, it's not a retransmit because a retransmit will always have a, a a length of one. If the packet data at zero is not equal to packet uh, retx data zero, then we can also return false, right? Because that will always be the case. And then finally, for uh, for the rest of the data bytes, so while i is less than the packet uh, data length, i plus plus, like if any of those uh, if any of those data bits are not equal to ff, then also return false. And finally, if all of that matches, then it must be a retransmit packet, and we can return true. So, this basically is telling us if a packet is a retransmit packet. It probably would also be fine to like uh, just check like. We could also just convert this packet into a into an integer pointer and compare it uh, to exactly what we find in this one, but that's fine. You can choose how you do this comparison. There are many ways. Okay, so if uh, comms is retx packet, um, and that's going to be our temporary packet. If it is, then we are going to retransmit whatever our last packet was. Right now, we don't have some kind of uh, retransmit buffer. So let's actually create a new one of these here. And we'll call this our last transmitted packet. And we'll take care of that when we actually transmit packets, when we do a comms write. Um, in this case, uh, we are going to just do a comms write, and it's going to be the last transmitted packet. And of course, when we retransmit, then we go back to the receive byte length. So this state, and then we break. 
Okay, so at this point in the code, we know that we must be in this situation. So what do we want to do next? We want to check if our packet is an acknowledgement packet, because if it's an acknowledgement, then we don't need to store it in the buffer. Okay, so checking if something is an acknowledgement is going to be very, very similar to this function. So I'm actually going to change this function. I'm going to change it from is a retransmit packet to is single byte packet. If it's a specific single byte and then the byte that it's going to be, we'll check over here. So now instead of checking uh, for packet retx data zero, we'll just check it against the byte which is passed in here. And then down here where we actually use that is retransmit packet, instead we'll check this and we'll pass in packet retx data zero. So now we can check if it is an acknowledgement packet. That's great. We don't need to do anything else. We can just go straight away to the length state, right? That's just here. It's an ACK packet, so we just go over here. And otherwise, if it's anything else, we're going to do these two actions, which is we're going to transmit an acknowledgement and we're going to store the packet into a buffer. So let's, uh, let's take care of that. Let's uh, transmit an acknowledgement, comms write, uh, let's write the packet in. Um, actually, let's do the, let's write the packet afterwards. I, I realize that it's out of order here, but let's first store it into a buffer. So how are we going to store it into a buffer? Um, well, what we're going to do is to uh, just build up a kind of ring buffer again, I think is the simplest thing to do. So um, we're going to need a uh, a buffer of comms packets. And I think we'll, we'll define this to be uh, like the number of packets that we can possibly store. It's going to be small because um, every packet that we uh, send or receive is basically an exchange. Um, and so like in a conversation, you always expect kind of, you're not really expecting to just send uh, continuous packets uh, over and over again. So your buffer size doesn't need to be huge. Like it just needs to be big enough to buffer just a few packets that you can deal with in, in time. So I think I'm going to set this to be, uh, I don't know what makes sense here. Uh, packet buffer length. I guess um, we can make this that we buffer eight packets at a time. I don't know if that's enough or if it's too few or if it's too many, but I'm going to set it for eight to eight for now. And we can see what that is in terms of uh, like how many bytes that is, that's eight times 18 bytes. So you need to also be a little bit careful about how many bytes you end up using for all of these intermediate buffers. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's, uh, let's do this. And this is going to be our packet buffer. And we'll just, uh, yeah, we don't need to initialize it actually. And then of course, just like in our uh, ring buffer, we will have a, uh, a packet read index. We'll have a packet write index. And that's kind of what our, that's what our buffer will be, right? Um, I guess we can make a mask as well. Static UN32T packet uh, buffer mask is. And the reason that we're not using a, a ring buffer data structure here is that this time the data that we're buffering is not just a single byte, it's actually a whole comms packet T. So it would kind of not quite work out if we were to, to use the ring buffer and the ring buffer structure there. So instead we'll just make a little bespoke ring buffer here. And so when we're going to store, um, we'll just do these like kind of bespoke operations in place. So when we go to store the byte, uh, the packet, sorry, 
and actually we need uh, one more function here, which is a little bit just before we can get into writing this, we need a function that's basically mem copy. Um, and I'm thinking that, of course, we could just include the string header and that would give us mem copy, but then I'm not sure that it, of all of the other things that that's going to bring in. And I don't really want to bring in the entire thing just for mem copy. So for now, I will just write a sort of bespoke mem copy, uh, which you can decide whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. I think everyone, many, many applications and firmware will always include like at least one bespoke implementation of mem copy, even though it's probably completely unnecessary. <clears throat> um, okay, so comms, yeah. Hmm. Call it comms mem copy, uh, and we will just take in um, let's call it packet copy. So we will take in uh, a comms packet t pointer, which is the source, and we will take in a const comms packet t destination. And that's it. We're just going to copy this structure to this structure. And let's not get too fancy about it. So we'll just we'll do destination length equals source length. We'll do, uh, let's grab one of these for loops. We'll do this one uh, for this. So that's going to be the destination data equals source data at zero. And all of these dots here should actually be, I'm not sure it doesn't like here. Expression must be a modifiable L value. It should be const. And that should be I. And finally, the destination CRC should be the source. CRC. All right, so that gives us a mem copy that we can use here. Okay, so in this case, now, how do we do this? We need to figure out what the... Uh... Now, let's think about this as well. The only time that we're ever writing packets is, uh, is when we're in this comms update function, and the only time we're ever reading packets is when we're in another part of the firmware. So this, we don't even have to worry about interrupt routines here. We know that the calls to read and write, so basically whenever we're pushing data in the ring buffer or pulling it out, we don't actually expect there to be concurrency issues here. This is something that's gonna take place uh, sequentially for sure. Because we're doing bare metal, we don't have a real-time operating system, we don't have uh, context switching between our code. If we did, that's where we could expect a problem to happen, but because we know that um, that's not gonna take place, uh, we can actually just do away with the idea of needing to be careful and calculate, uh, uh, like all the things that we actually did have to do in the UART ring buffer, we don't necessarily have to do here. So we can just figure out kind of, um, we can write into our read index, so that's going to be our packet buffer, and that's gonna be the packet uh, right index. The packet right index is going to, uh, that's going to be the place that we're writing into. And we're now going to use our comms packet copy. And our source is going to be our temporary packet. So that's what we're going to pass here as our source. And our destination is going to be this packet. So that's us writing into the ring buffer. Then we need to com uh, create the next uh, the next write index. So in this case, that's write index plus one mod the not mod uh, bit masked with the packet buffer mask. Okay. So then we've we're going to wrap back around, and 
Uh, finally, we're going to write an acknowledgement packet out, which is just going to be a reference to our ACK packet. And then when we've done those operations, we can move back to the receive byte length state. And that's it. That is the CRC portion of this done. So this now is actually our state machine, right? We've implemented this entire thing. So we've received the length, the data, and the CRC. We've handled the case of a bad CRC. We've handled the case of, uh, no, actually we haven't, no, we have. We've handled the case of needing to retransmit the last packet, and we've handled the case of having a valid byte that isn't a retransmit, uh, and that isn't an acknowledgement, and stuffed it into the buffer and acknowledged the packet. So we've done all of that stuff. So it's not too much uh, code here, as you can see, right? We go from line 68 down to line 115, so just about 60 lines of code. And uh, yeah, that's quite a decent implementation, I believe. All right, so now we actually need to go and write the rest of the these functions. So how do we know if we have packets available? This is um, exactly the same way that we tell if any other ring buffer is empty or has data. So if a ring buffer is empty, if it's two pointers are the same. So if the packet uh, read index is not, uh, basically if it's not equal to the packet write index, then we have some data available. When we do a comms write, this is us just writing data out through the UART. So what we're going to do is to do uh, UR write, and here we're going to pass a data pointer and a length. So what we're going to do is again convert our packet into a UN data a UN pointer. So our comms packet T pointer is going to become a UN A T pointer, and this is going to be um, a packet length. Right, this should be eighteen. Yep, that's all we need to do there. And when we read something, this is us just reading from the ring buffer. So um, yeah, and by the way, also when we're dealing with our comms update, one of the things that we didn't take care of at this stage is like, what do we do if the ring buffer, um, uh, if the ring buffer runs out of memory, right? We, we have too many packets to deal with before we actually run this code. We didn't actually take account of that, and it might be a good idea to do that because otherwise it will be tricky to debug. So I think I might actually put um, put something in here just for now, which is going to be, uh, and also I didn't increase the right, in oh, I did increase the right index. So the next right index is, is this one. Okay, and I think it might be worth actually uh, checking this and just like making sure that we've got something for it. So what I might do is to put an assert in and assert that the next write index is not the read index. So we should be able to include the assert header and the assert header is just part of the C standard library. Um, so we should be able to assert that the next write index is not equal to the packet read index. And what will happen is if we're debugging, we're actually going to hit this and we'll, we'll see that come to light. All right, um, so when we actually come to read something, we just basically need to do the same thing we do here, right? Uh, we're going to check, um, or no, we're, we're simply going to read out of the uh, out of the ring buffer. So we're writing into this packet, so it's actually really, really simple. We're going to do a comms packet copy. Uh, the source is going to be um, the packet buffer at the packet read index. And the destination, of course, is just the packet that they've passed in. So we're going to copy the data from the buffer into the packet. And then we just need to compute the next read index, which is, of course, read index plus one masked with the packet buffer mask. 
that's that. That is that complete. So this is actually our entire implementation for the uh, for the comms packet state machine complete. Now the the thing is there could there could easily be bugs in this. Very likely, in fact, that there are some bugs in this. But um, we're going to have to find out if there are bugs in the next episode, because in order for us to properly test this, we actually really need um, a program on the PC side to actually communicate with packets. Um, so I'm going to write that off camera, the first implementation of that, um, mainly because this, this series is really about building firmware. And um, what I build there is going to be probably in some kind of scripting language, either Python or JavaScript. And that will kind of be the program which is going to send our firmware out. And it's not going to be that different actually to this because, um, of course, if we're also dealing with packets, we're going to need the exact same packet state machine implemented on the sending side as well because it also needs to be able to deal with packets coming in. It needs to be able to frame them up, retransmit, acknowledge, all of those kind of things. So I don't want to just write the whole same program but in a different language again on, on screen. But what I will do is I'll put a very simple implementation of that in place and we can do some debugging and make sure this does in fact work. So there'll probably be one short uh, extra episode there which basically v validates that this works correctly and if it doesn't work correctly we'll try to address the bugs. Maybe you've already seen them. You can leave a comment below if you happen to have spotted one. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of our implementation for now. So the last thing I actually want to do is I want to make sure that this actually works, that it builds, it compiles, because if there are bugs there, we might be able to fix them already. So in order to check that, we actually need to come into the make file and we need to uh, just change a few things here, things that we've already done in the application. So first of all, we need to add the shared directories uh, to this. So we need to have a shared source directory and a shared include directory. And those are basically both in back one directory, shared source and source ink, uh, source and ink. Okay, so this is our, uh, yeah, this is like horrible mix of tabs and spaces. I guess we'll just do it like this. It's actually okay for these things to be mixed tabs and spaces, but now I've seen it, it's actually, uh, it's hard to leave it there. Okay, so now they're all tabs. All right, so we have our shared source and shared include. Uh, we need to include the shared directory and we need to add some objects to our build. So we have the bootloader.c. Now we're gonna have the comc as well. So going to be the comms file but we also have some shared so we're going to need to have crc and that's going to come from the shared source directory uh, core uh, that's crc8 uh, we're going to have uart and we're going to have ring buffer so that's going to include all of those uh, parts as well Yeah, okay, so I, I think that's the files we need. So let's do a clean, and let's run make. And, oh, this is interesting. So maybe this is the assert, which is causing this. Because <laughs> I see here there's a whole bunch of reference to Unix um, system calls. And that often happens when you include something from the uh, standard library. So yeah, I think this is coming from the fact that we've included the assert header. So maybe we can't do that as easily. So let's take out assert. I just want to confirm that that is the problem. So I'm just going to comment out assert here. Make, clean, make. Yeah, okay, so that actually built. So in this case, we, we, can't, um, we can't use assert, but I do want to check that that condition doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do for that is well, actually, let's check if um, libopencm3 has something for this, because what my initial plan to do is, is to just put an if statement that checks this condition. So if the next thing happens to equal the packet index, 
in that case, um, uh, what I would do is to include an ASM uh, with a breakpoint instruction. So this basically would, uh, let's make sure that builds, warning, implicit declaration of function. So I think it does have to be like this. Yeah, okay. So what this would do is insert a um, an assembly instruction that would cause a breakpoint to happen at this point. So if we were debugging, we would actually hit this as a breakpoint. So this can be like quite a fine way of making sure that something doesn't happen. This is a fine assert, so to speak. But there might actually be a nicer way of doing this. So I'm actually going to search for this. And it seems that this is only mentioned here. So I think that lib opencm3 doesn't have like a specialized function for do a breakpoint, which is fine. This is good enough for now. So when we run make, we, we build, there are no errors. It seems to be okay. Let's just take a quick look at the map file to make sure, well, it's probably going to tell us that everything got optimized away because um, we don't use it. So it shouldn't be a surprise if any of these, like the UART functions are all optimized away. Um, the data buffer is optimized away. The ring buffer stuff is optimized away. So actually it doesn't really tell us a whole lot um, before we actually implement it, but it is good that it builds. Okay, so um, that's kind of it for now. Um, I hope this has made some sense. I tried to get through this as quick as possible because we spent a long time talking about the theory in the previous episode. So I actually wanted the implementation part to fly by as quick as possible. But now if all has gone well, and we'll have to test this of course, but if all has gone well, then this should work correctly and we will have a way of exchanging packets. Now we still need to write the synchronization portion of this, right? So the bootloader can't really start exchanging packets until we are synchronized. So we're gonna to have to implement that little synchronization step as well, but considering that will also have to be part of the, um, uh, the program that we write in Python or JavaScript, um, it, that's not gonna be a large problem. That's basically just looking at four bytes and making sure that they match. And then we can sort of say that we're synced and move into the, the packet portion. Um, okay, so that's kind of it for now. Um, I hope this made sense. Please leave a comment if something doesn't make sense or you simply want to ask a question. You can also join the Discord server. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.